Hey there, I thought it'd be cool to make a uh, quick video on a module that allows you to create uh, neat and pleasing visual elements in your Roblox games. This module is called Spring and the original version can be found in the Nevermore engine made by Quinty. However, I found another version that was nicely type annotated that I thought would be good to use. You can find the original references inside of the script. There was a small issue with this type annotated version that I had to fix, but you can go ahead and grab the this version or this module from the link in the description and I'll go over how to use it real quick. So as the name suggests, Spring, this module allows you to emulate springs in your game and transform values in linear space to match the movement of a spring. Linear space values can be things like uh, numbers, vectors, that kind of stuff. We can control the speed or the responsiveness of the spring, as well as the damping of the spring, which controls basically how visually bouncy it is on the screen. And with such great amounts of customizability, we can utilize springs in many areas in our games to spice things up visually. As an example, let's say you wanted to move this part right here over to this blue parts position and then over to the red parts position and kind of just move them back and forth and animate between the two parts. You could use the tween service, but if you wanted to have more customization with maybe a springiness type movement between these two parts, then we can use the spring module to do just that. So as an example, I'm just going to throw a script inside of this spring part and then we can go ahead and get our spring module. And if you're wondering about this autocomplete, this is Slightnix autocomplete plugin. If you're interested about that, it'll also be in the description. But we can go ahead and create a brand new spring. And we're actually going to need to create two different springs. And that's because we cannot linearly interpolate C frames because C frames are not in linear space. We need to convert the C frame into a linear space. And we can do that by separating the position and the rotation components. And we're gonna have to put those into two separate springs. So we can make one spring that stores the position. So we could just call it position here and we do spring.new and this spring expects an initial value that we have to initialize it with so it knows what values to return and what it expects and that kind of stuff and since we're going to be storing the position this needs to be a vector 3 and right now we'll just initialize it to a value of 0 and then we're also going to need a spring for the rotation of our part so we can make another new spring and since we can't store C frames in here we're just going to have to store the X Y and Z rotations as another vector 3 so we do vector 3.0 so here's our two springs and in Inside of these springs, we can adjust some other properties such as the speed, and there's another property in here called damping. So these allow us to adjust how responsive or fast the spring is, as well as how much the spring bounces. And for demonstration purposes, inside of my spring part, I added a few attributes here of damping and speed. So we'll just read from the part what these attributes are and set those to be the damping and the speed. You also wanna make sure your speed is not zero. It has to be at least above zero or you'll get some weird NAND values produced by the spring. So just make sure your speed is above zero. And then we can go ahead and set speed equal to part. Actually, let's make a reference to our part up here. So part equal to script.parent and then we do part get attribute we'll get the speed and then we'll do the same thing with the damping so part get attribute damping and then we just kind of copy this and do the exact same thing here for our uh, rotation and once we have our two springs set up we now need to read the value from the spring and update the position of our part every single frame so we're going to have to grab the run service here and every single heartbeat what we can do is we can update the c frame of our part and we're going to have to construct a new c frame so we do c frame dot new and what we have to do is we have to read from the position spring and there's a property in here called position so all the springs have this property and this is how you read what the current position of the spring is so we're going to get the current position and then we also need to add the rotation so we'll do cframe.angles and to do that we're going to have to actually get the rotation so we'll make our variable called rotation and that's equal to rotation dot position i know the naming convention isn't that nice and actually this is probably better to uh, rename it in another way so these variable names aren't conflicting and it's a little bit easier to read but this basically is the vector three storing the three rotation values of x y and z so we'll put in rotation of x rotation of y and rotation of z so here is our angle here is the position and we're putting that to be the parts c frame 
every single heartbeat or every single frame in the game. So now to spice things up a little bit, we actually need to be able to tell our springs where to go. So what we can do down here is we can just have a wild true do loop and we'll just yield every single second and every single second we'll just move the targets of our springs between these two parts. So we'll set the target first over here and then a second later we'll move the target over here. And then every single frame our part's going to be springing back and forth between these two parts here, the position and rotation of these parts. So what we can go ahead and do is we can update position.target and we need to update the target to one of the targets in the workspace, either goal one or goal two. And to keep track of bouncing back and forth between the two parts, I'll just make a boy in here and then we'll just check to see uh, if the boolean is true then we can go ahead and set the position to be equal to workspace dot goal two dot position otherwise we're just going to set it to the first position and we can basically just copy this and instead do this for the rotation but what we want to do is we want to read the rotation from the c frame of our part so we do workspace dot goal two dot c frame and then to get the rotation, there's a method in here called two Euler angles, X, Y, Z. And then this returns a tuple of values. So we actually need to pass all these values or these rotation values of X, Y, and Z into a new vector three, because that's what the target has to be. We initialize it to be a vector. So we have to store a vector inside of the target. So we do vector three dot new and just wrap this in vector three dot new. And then we can do the exact same thing over here, but this is going to be the rotation for goal number one. And now that we've set the targets for these every single frame. The next thing we can do is just reset bool to be not bool. So that way we're kind of flipping back and forth between the two parts. And then actually one more thing uh, I wanna do is to be able to update these values in real time is that we're also going to be setting the speed and the damping properties uh, every single frame. So that way when we change the attributes here, it's gonna have the correct values. You could also listen to the get attribute change signal, but I'm just gonna do this because it's easy and fast. Just copy and paste. And then this should be good to go. We're passing X, Y, and Z, multiplying it by the position, which should be the rotation here. So we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and run the game. This should work. And unfortunately it is not working. Looks like I accidentally forget to pass the position here and I was passing the part itself. So make sure you're actually passing the correct values. And now it should work. So if we go and run our game, uh, there we go. Our part is slowly, slowly moving. And that's because the tamping and the speed values are not set correctly. But if we set the damping value to something like 0.5 and we up the speed to something like 15, as you can see now our part is bouncing between our two goal one and goal two parts. And you can see it has that spring-like effect. If we wanted to make it more bouncy, we could reduce this damping value to something like 0.2. And now you can see before the spring reaches its target and rests, it's bouncing a lot more. And of course, if we increase the damping value to something like one, we are going to basically have no bouncing whatsoever. And of course I can move these parts around here because the while loop should be able to update. And as you can see, it's moving correctly to the different position of these parts. And then we can rotate it as well because we are storing the rotation as a spring and it's able to spring back and forth with the position and the rotation. And then let's manipulate the damping here to add a little bit of bounciness. So set to 0.5. As you can see now, it's bouncing between the two parts. So this is pretty neat. We can use this type of springing behavior for anything. We want to tween parts in our game, we can do that. If we want some nice, smooth, and visually appealing camera manipulation in our game, we can utilize springs for that. And we can also use springs for realistic movement as well. So for example, if you have a gun framework or you're trying to make a first person gun view model and you want to have swaying when the character moves and recoil when the gun shoots and stuff like that you can utilize springs for that in fact for salty gun labs springs are exactly what's being used for the view model so when you walk around that movement that you see here with the view model that's using springs the kind of pivoting when the character moves a specific direction that's using springs when you aim down sights that's using a spring when you sprint and the gun moves down and up as you can see, there's a little bit of bouncing going on there. That's also using springs. And when you shoot and the view model moves, that's using springs as well. There's a whole bunch of different view model movement systems with our guns that utilize springs. And as you can see, it produces a very visually appealing effect. Now we could also use springs for user interfaces as well. So let me go ahead and exit out of this. And let's say we had a screen UI, right? And let's say there's a frame in here and we kind of want to move this frame around on the screen, move its position and kind of add the springiness effect to it. Well, we can do basically the exact same thing we did with our part, but instead we just need to affect the position or frame. So let's add a local script. 
At the same time, we're going to need our spring. We're going to need the run service. And let's go ahead and have a spring that's going to be responsible for the position of the frame in our GUI. So we'll do spring dot new. Now you might be tempted to pass in like a UDIM in here, but unfortunately we can't do that for the spring module because UDIM 2s, they don't have uh, the meta methods required for like multiplication and stuff like that on them. So we're going to have to use a vector to represent our UDIM. So we can just put in a new vector too, because I'm just going to use a UDIM with the scale positioning only. So we're only going to need a single X and Y value, and we can use a vector two to represent that perfectly. And then kind of the same setup we can do in here, every single frame, what we're going to do is we're just going to update the position of our frame. So we can do GUI or script.parent.frame. And then we just do frame dot position equal to udem2 from scale. And then we can do position, get the position property, get the X, and then do the exact same thing for the Y. And now what we can do is we can just randomly yield here. So actually let's get a random number generator up here. We can do RNG equal random dot new. And we'll just randomly wait some kind of amount of time. And then we can go ahead and set the position dot target equal to a new vector, new vector two. And we'll just position it randomly on the screen. So we got to remember that these values need to be in scale. So let's just do a random number between 0.1 and 0.9. That way our frame stays on the screen. We can do that for both the X and the Y axis. And then now this should also work. So if we go and play test the game, we should see that our frame is moving around on the screen. Pretty cool. Now, of course, it's moving around quite slowly because the default values of the damper and the speed aren't that high. So we could, of course, adjust that. We could go back in our local script and we could change the damping to be something like 0.5 and we could up the speed to be something like 15. So now if we go and play, as you can see, our frame is moving a lot faster on the screen. It's kind of bouncing around all over the place and it looks very visually appealing. And I'm already getting some ideas what you could do with this. Maybe you wanted to create like a little fun mini game on the screen where you have to try and click the frame. And as your mouse gets closer to it, you could have it like shoot away from your mouse and use springs to do that because it looks kind of cool. Now, one more cool thing you can do with springs is that they have a method called impulse, which basically shoves the spring in a particular direction that you specify. So what we can do here is we can refer to our position spring with our part, and we're just gonna wanna bounce it in a particular direction. Now inside of my spring, I actually have an attribute for that. So we're just going to read from that attribute, but we can impulse the spring and we need to give it a vector three for this vector three spring. And we can just go ahead and refer to our part, get attribute impulse. So now every single second, it's going to be impulsing uh, the spring in that particular direction. Right now it's zero, so there's not gonna be any impulse. And then one more thing I actually need to do is I need to store a reference position or the original position of our part. So original position is equal to part dot position. And then we need to set the part position equal to the original position offset by whatever this offset is of the spring when we impulse it. Because what's going to happen is we want the spring, the current target of the spring is set to zero. So that's where it's going to rest. So this spring is acting as an offset on top of the original position of our part. So if we go and run the game, our part is just sitting here. And if we change, let's say the speed to 15, let's up the damping to 0.5 and we impulse it on the Y axis by like, let's say 50. As you can see now, our spring bounces up every single second and it comes back down to rest because the spring wants to return back to its target of zero offset. And of course we can manipulate the values here. We can impulse it here on both the X and the Y axis. So now it's kind of bouncing that way. We can implement some Z value into it. We can just kind of have fun and mess around with these values to see where we want to impulse our part. But this is also very useful. The impulse method is useful, I should say, for doing other effects. Like if you wanted to make the camera shake from an explosion or you wanted to make some kind of element shake after something happened, you can use impulse for that. It's pretty cool. So my friends, those are springs. You can use them for all sorts of things in your games to create awesome springy like effects to really juice up the visual elements in your game. That's going to be all from me for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.